This is my update video to my uh, Commodore 1541 case mod video. Um, as you can see, I've uh, I have actually decided against drilling the hole in the side. Um, when I did some research, I found out that Intel is releasing their new IV bridge processors. Um, they use less power, so I can actually get an iCore 7 at 65 watts, which is the most the motherboard in this can take. And um, the G G GPU in the new processors processors has been completely reworked so that you get two to three times the performance of the current integrated Intel 2000 or Intel 2000 slash 3000 so it'll be able to keep up with that um, video card. I did for a while explore some ideas of mounting a um, sideways one of the duct fans like in a laptop cooler where it sucks air from the bottom and then pushes it out um, in front um, but finding a fan has been rather difficult for this case um, and the only fans, fans that I found so far pushed absolutely no air so I have decided against that solution for this current point in time um, I did add an exhaust fan over here it's just hot glued in there it's a 60 millimeter fan it does move a considerable amount of air it did help a lot with the thermals um, I changed a couple settings in the BIOS. I told um, the BIOS to turn the CPU on to maximum at a lower temperature so that pulls uh, the CPU fan kicks in sooner, which draws the colder air in through here, which helps cool the entire case because even though the CPU cooler is pulling more air than it needs, it disperses cooler air throughout the entire case by pulling it through this grill, grill on top. Um, I've also set it so its minimum is a little bit higher. However, it does get louder as a result because it's kicking the CPU fan up from like 33% to 100% almost instantly um, at like 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius as opposed to usually about 80 or 90. Um, the back hasn't changed at all. We haven't done any mods on the back. I've got a million more cables plugged into this thing right now. Um, I am going to take this thing down and kind of um, point out... Um, some of the internals kind of give you some some ideas of how things fit show the mounting screws in this video so I'm gonna do a cut here and I'll show you what the insides of this thing looks like and tell you a little bit more alright let's go ahead and cut right to um, the internals on this thing let's give a I wanted to give a quick look on this thing on the bare back um, still haven't cleaned this up yet down here um, there's still some permanent marker markings. I haven't completely cleaned this up yet. I've been using this computer hardcore since um, I finished it. It's been a wonderful desktop replacement. It uses less power, and it just looks darn cool. But anyway, um, this is how our, um, the bottom is actually mounted now. We have um, these three millimeter by they're three millimeter, 0.5 pitch, and they are 45 centimeters, I believe, or 45 millimeters long. And we've got these nylon washers. Oopsies. Okay, let me try this again. Uh, these screws are um, three millimeter, 0.5 pitch, 45 millimeters long. Um, then they're housed in these um, nylon washers, which just fit perfectly in this hole. It actually required you to cinch down the screw to um, get it into place. And there's two of them there on both sides and the bottom, holding both the bottom in. To make it far away from the camera, and then these are just the the hardware mounting solutions for the um, the motherboard itself. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let me, uh, take these uh, bolts out and the other two normal bolts that would be in this thing as soon as I get a screwdriver. And we'll take a quick look inside this thing. The space is kind of cramped for cables. So it, it does become a little hectic in here. You have to kind of be careful every time you um, jostle this thing or move this thing around. Um, let's take a quick look at these bolts real quick. I can't take the washers out anymore because they're just crammed in there. But um, I got those at an, uh, some RC car supply store online. Just did a search for 3mm by 45mm bolt um, screws and it was one of the things that popped up. Uh, my brother was actually the one who ordered them, so um, if anyone perhaps requires the link, uh, I can try and find the location of them. Um, if anyone, I'll try and get the 
My brother knows the size of these washers too, and I'll try and get the size of those those washers. Um, so that if anyone wishes to reproduce this project um, in their own means of fashion, they can. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. As you can see, I did mount um, this cooling fan. It's just hot glued in there for now. Um, let me get in a little tighter here. Um, then you've got the we've got the power button right here, and we've got the uh, the power um, coming in. Uh, let me disconnect this just to make this a little bit easier to deal with. And I've only got two cables to worry about here. Okay, um, so basically this is this is the insides of this thing. Um, I know the lighting's horrible. It's night, so. Um, but anyway, we've got uh, the cabling right here. This is the cabling that goes to the power light and the hard drive light. And uh, you kind of tip this tripod in. Um, and as you can see, this is actually the original uh, rail that was inside the Commodore. Um, you can probably see it better right about here. But um, the rail kind of has this V-shape cut in it. Um, Sorry, 60 hertz uh, LED flashlight. Um, and that I had to do that on both sides just to mount this motherboard because it was really tight. Um, it was a little bit longer than that. However, that solution made this the mounting this drive really easy. Um, so getting this lined up was really easy. I did break the hot glue on this, unfortunately, so it's it's actually kind of loose now. I'm gonna have to tear or take all the hot glue out and redo it, but. I'm not so worried about that right now. I'll do that another time. But um, as you can see down here in the bottom, the, there are the cone things that are supposed to be right here. Have actually been um, dremeled out, and that's because the motherboard literally hits them on both sides. So you have no choice but to dremel them out. Um, the board is mostly centered at this point. Um, like I said, this fan sits right underneath the the duct area. So you end up pulling cold air in for your CPU. Um, this is, and then we've got the, this is a, um, th uh, this is for SSDs. It's supposed to have two slots. It mounts your, um, so you can mount two hard drives in here. I only have one. It's a 720 RPM drive. And then I got my cables kind of ducked behind this. It's, the space is really tight. And this is the Pico power supply. Um, this is a 160 watt. Um, it comes, uh, well, actually, the one on Amazon comes with a power brick which you can see over there, that's 150 watts. Um, so basically that's just the, the quick look at the insides in this thing. As you can see, it's, it, it, it's got room for a slim, sloppy, or slim CD drive, a notebook drive, and a motherboard, a micro ATX. Um, I will point out that the micro ATX boards all li are limited to 65 watt TW or TDP or TWP, I can't remember what it's called. Um, processors, so you're stuck with iCore fives until the Ivy Bridge comes out. When there's supposedly the iCore sevens are going to be mostly 65 watt. Um, anyway, that's uh, I did a look inside my uh, Commodore 1541 mod. Again, this is all thanks to my brother. If you're interested in any of his projects, you can find him over at NatPy1 on YouTube. Um, why don't you check him out? He's got some pretty other cool things that he's done.